Hey, welcome everyone. Mark here at Blue Glow Electronics. Just a couple updates on the projects I've got going on. Uh, the last few weeks I've just had no time at all for this hobby or uh, for the bench. Just had various family related things going on. Kids coming home from out of town. Um, we lost a, one of our dogs uh, last weekend. And just different stuff like and the building is uh, getting close to being finished down here so putting some time in down there as well so uh, sorry about that it could be a couple more weeks next weekend's easter um and then i've got i gotta go out on the road for a week um for work so stuff like that just kind of gets in the way so hold tight i promise it's coming same with the 300b amp uh, that i've been working on um, it may take me a while. I, when I get it right, you'll know it and, and we'll put it out. But um, I gave a little bit more of an update uh, in another video this week I'll tell you about here in a minute. But uh, I just want to tell everybody, be patient. These things aren't dead. They're still happening. Just uh, what do they call it? Real life gets in the way sometimes. All right, let's dive on into the next topic. Okay, about a month ago, I got reached out to by a kind gentleman named William Land, and he said, hey, Mark, I've kind of got my own uh, YouTube channel starting up. He's got a few videos out there. It's titled SRT Amplification. And his question to me was, he said, basically, I'm wanting to do some interviews of people like yourself and some others that are well known in the YouTube community for making audio related content. And I said, heck yeah, I'm, I'm game for that. So, um, you know, we set up shop and as you can see here, we made a 48 minute long um, video, you know, where he, you know, we set up on, uh, on Zoom and basically, you know, he was asking me questions and I was giving answers. Most of this very much, you know, kind of on the fly type content. Um, so we had a lot of fun doing it. There's content here probably I've never told before. There's a couple of funny stories and uh, and I gave some updates on some projects we got going on in a little more depth. So uh, highly recommend if you get a chance, go check out this video. I'll put a link down below. Um, big shout out to William. Thanks for doing this. We had a lot of fun making this video. And, um, you know, everything about it went really smooth. Other than I've got to learn, this was a learning lesson for me, first time I've been interviewed on camera. So I kept looking at my screen at him asking me questions uh, instead of at my camera. And what I learned in this video process was, well, that just means in the interview, it looks like I'm looking off into, the, into space and not paying attention. <laughs> In reality, I was looking right at him on the screen, and so I've got to learn next interview, if I ever do one, to look right at the camera the whole time. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this. Go over and check it out. Like I said, we'll put a link down below, and thanks again, William. Hope Hopefully uh, you get some good uh, viewership from this video, and hopefully I'm looking forward to the other ones that you uh, mentioned to me you were trying to get done. So we'll be excited about all that. Thanks again. All right, I thought I'd share a little life tip for you. That's something I'm doing, and maybe all you guys are doing it already. But if not, <laughs> something I've thought about, you know, a lot. I um, I think I've told you guys before. 2014, I found out I had uh, cancer. Beat that. Uh, 2015 had uh, bilateral blood clots in both lungs. Beat that. 2019 had a heart attack. Beat that. 2020. Um, had blood clots in both lungs. And then here in 2021, I've had a blood clot in a lung. I failed to mention all this to you guys in, in between making videos. But um, I've been been struggling a little bit with this lately. But at any rate, my, my life tip really was um, I've really gotten focused uh, lately. been spending some time doing it. I bought a box of these off of Amazon. I think it was a thousand of them for 60 some dollars. Just little paper tags with the uh, thing on it. And what I've been doing is I've been writing on them, right? Um, i give you an example. This is a Dennis Had Inspire Amplifier 2A3. I wrote down at the bottom what I paid for it down here, what I think it might be worth, um, and a date. And then on the back, and then I kind of put down, you know, when it was built or whatever. And then I bought me these, um, there's two little stamps here off of Amazon. They didn't come from the same seller, unfortunately, but one's a green checkbox. And the other, and I'm turning them all around, the other is a red X, and then I'm just stamping it. You know, if I know these things are fully working and functional, they're getting the green stamp. And then if, uh, if, they, if it's something that needs restoring or not complete, for whatever reason, I'm putting the red X on there. 
And then what I've done, um, and this is something I've had for a while now, is a, a folder that my whole family knows where it's at, and I entitled mine in the event, uh, you know, the sad event that something would happen to me. Uh, there's everything in this folder from, you know, bank account info, you know, 401k, investments, cars, guns, you name it. Um, you know, I've got all this stuff in here so that people would, you know, and and I've also recommended in here, if something happens to me, here's some friends that would help you sell this, or here's some auction services. Because uh, the last thing you would want is all your cool stuff to end up um, being sold at a uh, you know a traditional yard sale or auction where this stuff gets pennies on the dollars. You're going to want to get some help from people that really know what they're doing and selling this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of good services out there, uh, for especially for ham radio operators, uh, to help them kind of you know, get rid of the family and get rid of stuff that, that they wouldn't need. Because gosh knows, I've got, that is my biggest fear in life is that I leave my family all this stuff and they have no idea what to do with it and they can't really monetize it and turn it into value and and so on and so forth. So anyway, a folder like this, not about, you know, I just made a note on here. I need to, I need to tell my family how to work the HVAC system in the house in here because, um, I've got a hot water baller, uh, baller here for, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, circulating hot water heat. But we only use that when it gets really cold. When it's not really cold, we use the heat pump, which is built into our AC unit. But that's stuff my wife doesn't know, my kids don't know, and, and I'm probably the only one. So for whatever that's worth, not a lot of money here trying to, like I said, uh, label everything I own and uh, make, just make it easier down the road in the event something does happen to me. Hope, hopefully not. I hope to be around a long time, but yeah. it's one thing I've learned through some of these events I've gone through is uh, it really makes you stop and think about, you know, what, what would you be leaving behind type thing. So anyway, all right, next topic. All right, I recently did something uh, while we're on the tech tip topics and, uh, what I did was I bought myself a laminator. I uh, really never had one, but uh, here's what I'm doing with it. So like you guys know the uh, Common Audio tube pinout sheet that I made, cheat sheet. Uh, you can get this up on my website. I'll put a link to it. And, um, you know, I just laminated it. Now I've got a nice little thing over here on the side. I just stick these in and uh, they're handy right when you need it. You know, while I've got probably 80% of this memorized, I run it. I still run into stuff from time to time. And I, you know, I had to pull it out and say, exactly how did the heater wiring go on that pin out or whatnot? Um, similarly, I just made this one and showed it to you guys a couple weeks ago. It's a tube characteristic sheet. Talks about the difference between application factor, mu, transconductance, and if you can see down here the relationship between all those. Great little cheat sheet to have to have handy. Everybody needs one of these. Um, you know, I've had this stuff memorized for 30 years, right? But you know the whole Roy G. Biv thing. But um, every once in a while, I'll run into a five, you know, band resistor, and I'm like, what was the tolerance on that? You know, and so I've got the little cheat sheet I pull out. Um, Mm, a uh, blue glow transformer <laughs> I've been working a lot with lately so got that one a power transformer I've been working a lot with lately so I've just been laminating stuff that I'm using a lot and, and keeping it stuck over here in a little uh, folder on the side here and I just grab them when I need them um, what I ended up buying I got it off Amazon this thing was like 30 bucks or so 35 bucks maybe it's a scotch uh, laminator and I made sure I got one that could do the uh, this is a uh, five mil which are fairly thick and then I just bought a hundred pack of uh, scotch five mil stuff here and uh, you just feed it in through there let it warm up for a couple minutes till the light comes on feed it through there with your uh, with your document in it and out the other side comes a nice little sheet it's just handy and uh, I'm, I'm loving it I wish I'd have done this uh, 20 years ago to be honest all right, you know, you guys have probably heard me say before that I'm not big on the whole um, let me send you an item for free, you do a review on it, and uh, you get to keep the item for free, but then whoever sent it to me gets lots of sales kind of thing, uh, kind of the pay-to-play model. But anyway, in my oscilloscope videos, I've had a few different vendors that have uh, reached out to me and said, been watching your oscilloscope series and interested in providing you with a portable oscilloscope to use in that series. And 
one of the guys, uh, Jason, he's been pretty kind um, over time and just talking with me or whatnot. So at any rate, he sent me what is titled a table oscilloscope. And what I kind of said was, look, this is not a paper play deal. But if you want to send me one, I'll use it in the video. And if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. You're going to get whatever it is kind of thing. Um, anyway, I haven't even opened it yet, as you guys can see here. By the way, this little thing right here, it's called an NT Cutter Pro. Um, absolutely love this. I keep it in my, uh, over here with my pins. And it just clicks up and you've got a razor knife and these little, little things break off. And um, absolutely great for anything from opening boxes to... You know, precision cutting out of, of things or whatnot. Uh, not a lot of money. Super handy item. Uh, you get two tips and one here. <laughs> anyway, we we'll open it up. Look what we got. We got uh, looks like a pair of probes here. Got a product instruction manual in here. And then what we have, and it looks like it's still all wrapped up in the, uh, in the plastic here. But we've got a portable oscilloscope, and I'm not going to go into this right now on, on this on this video. But one thing I want to talk about portable oscilloscopes, and one reason they can be a great item to have, is because they're not referenced to anything, right? These aren't tied back to earth ground. They're, you know, whatever you end up tying via the oscilloscope cable here is what this thing is referenced at. So all these grounding things we talked about in video one of our oscilloscope series kind of go out the window with a portable oscilloscope. And uh, oh, I love that. You can get the two-way reflection going there. But um, yeah, so might be worth having one of these. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it more in the uh, oscilloscope video when we get there. I haven't even powered this one up yet. So we will see. But I just want to let you know I'm breaking, breaking my rules a little bit only because I didn't own a portable oscilloscope. And I thought it might be good to use in the in this video series. So we'll we'll see how that turns out. All right, guys, this Blue Glow Dot Club forum that we created has just taken off like gangbusters. I've been super super surprised. A lot of knowledgeable people on there. Uh, a lot of good content going on. A lot of good discussion. I'm trying to find time to to jump in there when I can. And uh, good news is though, when I do start traveling more for work laying in a hotel bedroom at night or on the airplane. Those are all great times for me to get to spend some quality time on that forum helping out. So uh, stay tuned. If you haven't joined yet, go over there and join. I know we had some some issues with people signing up and the emails not coming back to them for verification. I think it has more to do with the, the, the company I'm using for the for, to host the forum. But we've been working through that. A guy named Casey's been helping me with this. And uh, so far, so far, it's going great. Uh, I can't say enough uh, good things about what I've seen thus far. So come join us over there. All right, Friday afternoon here, and I have had a ham fest in the backyard here at the barn. Uh, a buddy of mine, who's a picker, had picked up some stuff electronics-wise over the last few weeks, and uh, everything from old paper and oil caps here to uh, good switches, uh, some tubes, some uh, I see some orange drops hiding down in there. A bunch of resi resistors, bunch of uh, bunch of old brown caps down in here. Nice little Western Electric meter here. Just a bunch of random stuff. You know how we love random stuff down here. Some wire, a uh, bunch of tubes and whatnot in the back. So anyway, you don't always have to go to the ham fest. Sometimes it'll come to you. Um, <laughs> love this stuff. All right, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. Buddy of mine, Skip, from Winston-Salem, came over yesterday with a whole car full of stuff. Um, there was even more than, than what I showed in that picture there. Um, but, it, you know, it was just a lot of fun. He he is a picker full-time. He, he told me yesterday he quit his day job in 1996, and he has been a picker full-time since then. And uh, I follow some of his Facebook posts. Some of the stuff he finds is just, it's crazy. And, and he, you know, I know... I, my swim lanes are pretty narrow. I know electronics really well. I know comic books really well. I know guns really well. I know cars really well, but that's that's about it, man. His gets into, he knows photo photography stuff, you know, antique stuff. You know, the list goes on and on and on. Su super wide uh, skill set of, of picker, but uh, every once in a while, Skip runs across electronic stuff. And, you know, if it's a super high-end item, 
Um, sometimes I'll help him out. Uh, remember last year or so, he found a pair of Western electric speakers and I, I made a video for him and he ended up posting those online for sale. You know, it was just one of those things where, you know, this is what he does for a living. And if he gets a chance to make some money off of it, I'm going to help him out. And uh, But other odd, random little stuff like he found there, um, sometimes it's easier to just bundle it up and, uh, you know, pawn it off on me. And uh, <laughs> and then hopefully I can bring him some stuff, and, you know, down the road. It's, uh, it's kind of the way this hobby works. Anyway, we're going to call this a wrap. I'm beyond my 10 minutes. I like to keep these two. Uh, I did get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine a month ago. I got it the same week that one came out. I uh, felt fortunate to get the one and done. So I'm feeling a little better about being out and about. I wish there were some ham fest to go to now is what I want. But I had one come to me, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. All right, guys. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.